decolonization of the African mind. Decolonization of the African mind. 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 Would you, Would you like, like to know, to know what, what that, that really means? means? And, and why, why it is, it is such, such an, an important issue, issue today? today? Well, well, let, let us, us go, go to the, to the mouth, mouth of, of the oracle, oracle and, and he will make everything, everything clear. clear. Would you really like to know what that means? Well, first, you have to remember that the African was captured and enslaved to build the white man's kingdom and to help put the white man's visions into reality. If you open your eyes and look around, you will see that although he is supposed to have been emancipated, today's ex-slave is still doing exactly the same thing that he was captured and brought to the West to do. His whole life is still spent building the ex-slave master's kingdom and putting the ex-slave master's visions into reality. But because of the stupor of long domestication and the absence of an African liberation vision, the ex-slave often tends to believe that his solution lies in getting more jobs building the white man's kingdom. It is in the nature of being slave broken to view the vision of African liberation as unreal and impossible. For the broken slave, the only real thing is working for his master. Therefore, decolonization is essentially a psychological operation to rewire the African mind so that he can set out on a new course. In other words, it means freeing the African mind for the task of building his own kingdom. This task of mental decolonization is therefore the most urgent task that now needs to be done if there is to be any meaningful reparations. And that is what this episode is about. Decolonization of the African mind. But first take a bite on this morsel of truth. Every ex-slave that you see today has embedded deeply in his historically programmed DNA a traumatic experience of terrorism, a soul-destroying experience of slave breaking, and a mind-altering experience that comes from living under the tyranny of long slave domestication. We are on the brink of uncovering a hidden world. A world that connects past and future generations in ways we never imagined possible. 
What this means is an environmental exposure that your grandmother had could cause a disease in you, even though you've never been exposed to the toxin. And you are going to pass it on to your great grandkids. These extraordinary discoveries have the potential to affect every aspect of our lives. Not just the genes, but also the environment in the early life of your ancestors. It's not so much you are what you eat, it's that you are what your mother ate, and maybe you are what your grandmother ate. And if you take our data, you are what stress your grandmother or grandfather had. It will change the way we think about our relationship with every generation.
it is vital to come to terms with the trauma of slave breaking that has totally altered your African psyche and reshaped you in the image of the European. Armed with this truth, you should now see why there is an urgent necessity for self-reparations. Indeed, self-repair is the most vital part of the movement for reparations, and it can only be done by the ex-slave himself. If you do not tell your children the full story, showing them how, as a people, you have been terrorized, brutalized, slave broken, robbed, and stripped of your land and natural resources, they will think that landlessness is their natural birthright, and they will think that living in a cramped prison colony surrounded by ignorance and poverty is their natural state. Let us dig deeper to see why there is such an urgent need for self-repair. Listen to this scenario carefully. If you capture and cage a free creature and with the intent to break and domesticate this creature, you thoroughly erase all memory of its past freedom. After many generations, this caged creature, with no knowledge of any other reality, will become patriotic to its cage. Patriotic to its cage. And it will think that the cramped prison colony, where it is kept by its master, is paradise. In the early stages, you may have to beat your captive with a whip to force it to answer to its new slave name. But after it has been fully broken, it will bow to your superiority. And consequently, it will assume and internalize its own inferiority. And then it will accept the name that signifies its domestication as its own. After many generations, the domesticated creature will have no idea that it has been domesticated, because domesticated life is all that it will know. Its internalized inferiority can even become self-destructive, because it will lead to self-loathing. And that self-loathing will cause it to hate its own kind and prefer its master. After this creature has been fully broken and domesticated, you can then move the shackles and chains from off its feet and it will not run away. Then, if you hide the shackles and chains in history books, the broken creature will view the narrative of slavery as an old time tale about events that happened in the distant past of long ago. This is because in the midst of its enslavement, a domesticated creature has no comprehension of its enslavement. Its enslaved reality will seem like the normal way life is supposed to be, and it will become a creature that is never guided by a sense of history. If over a number of generations, this creature is subjected to consistent brutality and terrorism, fear of the master and self-loathing will become an instinctive part of its personality. Such fear and self-loathing can even cause the brutalized creature to worship the image of its master, hate the image of itself, and consequently hate its own kind. In fact, over many generations, bowing and worshipping and emulating the master will become a normal 
part of its personality. That is the meaning to being broken and domesticated. Having broken the spirit of this creature, you will have created a thoroughly domesticated species. And as a result of this domestication, that creature will no longer dream of freedom. It will have no desire to change from its inferior role in history. Because functioning in an inferior mode will become second nature in its broken mentality. Now you understand how the African became a Negro. Because this is how the Negro species was cloned and baked in the oven of long slave breaking and long domestication. It explains the mind of today's ex-slave. It explains why the idea of rebirth and resurrection seldom finds place in the mind that has been subjected to the process of domestication. That is why the voice that calls on him to turn a new page and participate in a process of resurrection is yet to attract his attention. This, this stupor, stupor of, of domestication, domestication that holds the broken slave that can accept and, and can adjust, adjust to the inferiority it is the demon that now fills the ex-slave with a deep subconscious shame that makes him want to forget the slave breaking process that disempowered him and remade him in the image of the European. And everything was done to keep the ex-slave in this stupor. Every plantation master was taught you, you have, have to sedate, sedate your, your slaves, slaves and, and keep, keep them, them in, in a stupor. stupor. You, you have to sedate your, your slaves, slaves and, and keep, keep them, them in, in a stupor. stupor. You, you have, have to sedate sedating the slave and keeping him in a stupor thus became a daily routine in the slave domestication program. And it continued from generation to generation on the slave plantation. As the plantation became more modernized, the sedation program became more scientific and more sophisticated. And it bred a kind of slave that is obsessed with getting temporarily happy to escape addressing the issue of slavery that still keeps him laboring every day to build the ex-slave master's kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how the ex-slave became a weak and powerless puppet controlled by a deep inner craving for the white kryptonite that keeps him weak and powerless. A major part of the sedation program involves feeding the slave with junk food on a daily basis over many generations. The ex-slave thus became a creature that is calibrated to crave for junk and his addiction to junk would therefore cause him to have truth allergies. Truth allergies. Just as the slave breaker intended, the broken creature would have no appetite for the knowledge that would lift him up to a higher state. Just as the slave breaker intended, this broken creature would therefore be satisfied with living a life that is devoted exclusively to building the slave master's kingdom. Building the slave master's kingdom and putting the slave master's vision into reality. And putting the slave master's vision into reality. 
the challenge today is there for is to repair the mind that has been subjected to centuries of slave breaking and centuries of slave domestication.